everyone, old school Pokemon here, I'm back again with my usual co-host, Catch 'em All Collectibles, Dan, on the Pokey Flips podcast. In this video, we highlight a clip from our most recent podcast. We hope you enjoy. Uh, Pokey Martin asked, "Can you guys go over eBay best practices?" When to list $19.99 versus $20, why sometimes there's free shipping versus not, when to end auctions, any other advice? Um, I, I always used to like those round numbers, $10, $20, whatever. So I always, I always used to list cards like that, but when I got back into... When I went when I went full time, I actually ended all of my eBay listings and started back from zero. And when I did that, I started pricing everything with that nineteen ninety nine, nine ninety nine, whatever. I don't think I don't think that makes a huge difference. Um, but it's it's so like like everywhere does that. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't see any stores selling stuff for twenty bucks. It's always it's always nineteen ninety nine. So there, there's got to be some logic and science behind that. So I think you're 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 better off just doing that, just following everyone else, um, than trying to uh, trying to do something different. So that's that's how I always price my stuff. And then as far as free shipping versus not, that's actually an interesting one because um, I'm big into the, aside the Pokey Flips podcast, my other favorite podcast is eBay for Business. And uh, it's like the, the eBay branded podcast. And one of the episodes recently was talking about free shipping versus paid shipping and how for a while, free shipping was like the, the standard on eBay. You had to offer free shipping in order for people to to purchase from you. But now, I guess we're seeing a kind of resurgence in paid shipping, where not as many sellers are offering free shipping. Um, so I think I think that's kind of an interesting one. Um, I've gone back and forth on that for a long, long time. With with shipping though, it's it's really something where if you're gonna list something for twenty dollars, um, it's either gonna be listed for twenty dollars with free shipping or fifteen dollars plus five dollars shipping. So the the you're not you're not making or losing any more money uh, by offering free shipping. At least if you're if you're doing it right, which you should you should be factoring the, in the cost of shipping um, when you're when you're offering free shipping on your actual item price. But the pro of offering like paid shipping is if you have a return re request, you don't have to refund the the shipping. But if you offer free shipping, that's basically saying you're not paying anything for shipping, so you have to refund that full amount. Um, so, so for me, I think I'll always stick with the free shipping on my own listings, just because I do think there's some benefit. People see the free shipping and kind of think that that's that's a better deal plus when it comes to people buying multiple cards which that's a lot of my business um if you have paid shipping it's a little bit tougher to have to send out those invoices when people buy multiple cards refund the shipping if they pay extra and all of that stuff so it, i think it's more convenient to offer free shipping um at least for me. You can do rules and you can do it where eBay will automate some of that, but sometimes it I I'm terrible with that. Years ago I used to charge shipping on some stuff and I'd have it if you spent this much shipping becomes free. Mm -hmm. It can be automated, but I do free shipping on everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then um when to end auctions I, I've always gone with Sunday nights. I think that's probably the best time. I think that's still probably the best time. Saturday, Sunday nights, that's that's kind of always the time that I've gone with. Um, as long as you don't want to be ending, like, high-end auctions, or really any auctions, at some, like, like random time, like 2, 3 in the morning, um, that's, that's a bad time to end an auction. Uh, really, really late, really early. Mondays are typically a bad time for auctions to end. Um, you you want to you want to end your auctions when you're going to have the most eyes on eBay, which is typically 
after work, uh, weekends, stuff, stuff like that. That's that's typically the best time to end an auction. Um, and then another thing of advice is just um, I would say pictures and item titles are your two your two biggest things. You want to have you want to have good pictures. Um, I would recommend like a black background for Pokemon cards. Don't use don't use a white background. Or if you have a scanner, that's probably the uh, another another really good option. Um, I like taking pictures just because it's a it's a lot quicker. And then titles is the most important thing. Uh, there's there's a lot of people that don't know how to use titles. Um, titles you so so for me for example, I start off with like the the biggest keyword. So for what we're selling, it's obviously Pokemon. So that's always the first word in every single one of my listings is Pokemon. And then I go to the next kind of the the next most important, which is the set name. And then I go to the card name, the card number, and then finally the condition. So that's that's kind of the format that I use with all of my listings. Uh, you want to keep your titles. You want to. You can use as many characters or up to eighty characters, but you want to try and keep your titles concise and only use keywords within your title. Uh, so none of the uh, look with the two at signs. Wow. Yeah. PSA ten question mark. Uh, don't be don't be doing that. <laughs> Not Charizard, Gold Star. <laughs> yeah, I think you covered everything pretty well. Um, I do the 99s. I think psychologically, 1999 just feels less than 20. One thing with certain thresholds, and I don't even know exactly how it works, but like eBay, eBay standard envelope, does that have to be under 20 or is it up to 20? Up to 20. So it can include 20. Like yeah. there might be certain thresholds where that becomes important. Maybe not. I just wanted to throw it out there in case it's a consideration. I think for seller protection, I think it's 750 and under. So like if you sell for 750 or maybe at 7 749.99, I don't think you need signature. But then 750 oh, one. and then 750 you do. Mm -hmm. So the technically, if you sell for 750 you'll net like $3 less than if you sell for $749.99. But you won't have that protection of the signature. So, yeah, I mean, there's different like cliff threshold type things that might come into play, but I do everything. I price 99% of what I, I list as the cheapest on eBay. So sometimes if someone's like $39.99, I'll just go like $39.95. But I usually end either in a 9 or a 5. Um... Sometimes I just go a whole dollar cheaper and I go like $38.99. It's, it's sporadic. There's no rhyme or reason to it really. Um, and then if I run like a sale, sometimes the numbers get weird because I'll do like a 15% off sale. And that's like, it doesn't end up with very clean numbers sometimes. Yeah. Um, free shipping. I do it on everything. There are ways to do rules if you want to charge actual shipping. I think when you charge shipping though, you open yourself up to complainers um mm -hmm. i remember years ago when i used to charge shipping i just do like a flat i want to say it was three bucks certain places would be like 276 and certain places would be like 314 so i just did somewhere in the middle yeah there were times where and you can print out a usps label to where it doesn't show the price you paid I think you can still do, I think all my labels by default don't show the price. I don't even mm -hmm. know if you can print them to where they show the price, but years ago you could. I remember having buyers reach out to me. I want a refund. I see that you paid 276 for shipping and you charged me 3. And it's like, okay, <laughs> free shipping forever now. <laughs> because like if I if I charge free shipping on a $20 slab, it costs me anywhere between 350 and 450 depending on where they live to ship it. If they buy two now, it costs the same amount, so I'm just netting that much more. Mm -hmm. One thing I recently did do, I think I made a rule if you buy I don't know if it's 3 or 4. If you buy 3 or 4 or more, you save $5 on your order. I think it's five dollars for every three items you buy. So if you if you buy 
three fifty dollar slabs, it'll be one forty five instead of one fifty. Because I do save on the shipping, so I pass mm -hmm. it along to you. And if you buy twelve of them, now you're saving twenty bucks. Um, so there are a lot of features that I need to like get down into. I need to like optimize more. Uh, because that's like a win win, right? It makes the it makes the buyer feel better. Oh, they're passing along that savings to me. Um. And what you were saying about the whole keyword thing. I don't know. Has eBay ever reached out to you? Have you ever talked to any of their like listing account specialists, whatever they call them? I if, I used to talk to them whenever they, because they'd call every once in a while. Uh, now I just don't even pick up. I'm trying to be like better now that I'm doing this full time. I had a Zoom. I had a couple Zooms the other day, a few weeks ago now. I think I have another one coming up soon with like an account specialist and we talked through the whole like we we looked at my listings we went through hey I, I see this talk me through why you do like she wasn't by any means an expert in in pokemon cards but mm -hmm. she like saw some things she threw out some ideas she mentioned oh, how cool. important like the first five keywords are yep they they were like she doesn't know no one knows i don't think the exact algorithm and how it all works specifically but like there is a very heavy weighting to your first five and we talked about like the way that i do it and, and i might change it at some point i do psa 9 mint charmander base unlimited so i i do grading company grade species set and i put pokemon card at the end really so when i search generally speaking I I haven't done this in a long time, but I think most collectors that search, I think the primary thing that, like, people are very much, like, <coughs> a lot of people are 10 collectors only. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are nine collectors only. So my thinking, putting the grade first, is like, say, like, five, six years ago, when I was putting together my PSA 9 Watsy set, it needed to be a PSA 9 watsy first edition hollow so yeah I, I would search like psa 9 mint muck expedition i basically type it in I, I do my listing titles catered to the way that i used to search out specific cards like mm -hmm. like say you're buying a no damage nine tails how do you search it what would you type in exactly i usually do nine tails error and no damage nine tails so yeah you're you're looking for a vague thing say say you needed to complete a set and say Say you needed like a PSA eight base unlimited Charmander. Like, what exactly would you type in? Yeah, I would do a PSA eight base Charmander. See, I would do six. I would do PSA eight Charmander base unlimited, and and that's exactly how I catered my title. I don't know if I'm like representative of the average consumer and how they search, but like that's my methodology for why I do it the way I do it. If anything. Maybe the species is the most important. Like Pokemon card is like the most generic thing. I don't specifically put it usually when I'm searching a specific card. Because some people don't even include that in their title. Like I think you need it in your title mm -hmm. in case they put it in their search. But a lot of people will just search PSA 9 Shadow of Squirtle. I don't yep. think they put PSA 9 Shadow of Squirtle Pokemon card. Yeah, right? but if people just I I I've always felt like you need to have Pokemon somewhere in your title for you those who type Pokemon and want to see the listings. Like, I, I think, I think the people most likely to want, well, anyone would want to buy this because this is Squirtle Squad, but he's not for sale. Um, but I think the the people most likely to want this would be searching out like this specific. Like most people that want a PSA nine Squirtle want a PSA 9 Squirtle. So they're yep. searching for the grade, for the species. If people search like Pokemon cards, they're going to get those ones, the, the mixed lots, the grab bags that people are paying like 20%, uh, the the added fee you can pay for, for like premier search results. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Promoted listings. So like you're going to lose to those ones anyways. Yeah. That that's my thinking behind it, but yeah, yeah, that's like it's something yeah, that, that I that's, that's an interesting one. I never I never thought of it like that. 
ta- talking it w- like very interesting and useful conversation to talk it through with and and she like i think i'm the only person she's talked to that sells pokemon cards as of yet so she's like don't like i think she threw out a couple ideas oh would it make sense to do this would it make sense to do that another thing she got into is like and she had all the stats she had all the numbers i have spreadsheets mm-hmm. somewhere that i need to look closer at the average Pokemon card seller in this category uses six item specifics and you're only using like four per listing. She's like, can you add any more of these? Like manufacturer, Wizards of the Coast, mm-hmm. grade, nine, grading company, PSA, set. I don't do rarity most of the time. She's like, the more you can add, the better. But how many people filter by common to find this like are people actually doing that i don't really know um, i i don't think so um, i don't filter by anything like if, if i'm yeah. looking for this card i search psa 9 shadow of squirtle and then i do price high to low or low to high <laughs> um people are weird though i i've played around and maybe i'll make a video on it at some point it feels weird it, it, it is weird i sold a psa 10 Red's Pikachu, the Japanese one, mm-hmm. for two hundred dollars. <sighs> that that card, the lowest list on eBay is like one twenty. Man, it was my last one, so I didn't really want to sell it really quickly. Anyways, I don't have any more raw. I don't have any more at PSA. Like I might never restock this card, so I was fine not selling it. Yeah, but I put it at two hundred, and I like juiced up. I juiced up the sponsored rate. Yep eBay pumped it and it sold. Yeah, I'll 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 never understand that. Like like when I'm if I'm a collector for that card, please people, please search PSA 10 Reds Pikachu. And that's how I have it titled cuz that's how I search it. Do low to high. And mm-hmm. when you, like sometimes people will pay such a high sponsored rate that like my $200 one might have been slotted search result 1 even if yep. you put it low to high. And then the next one might have been $110. Like scroll down one, scroll down 10 pixels. <laughs> and it, this is another thing the eBay rep told me. Um, I think it's, I think it's slots one to three, or maybe it's one to four. And then like nine to 13 or nine to 12 are sponsored slots. So if there are enough people paying the promoted listings fee, the first three or four search results and then between like nine and 12 will all be sponsored listings. Yep. So like you manual, like you have to consciously go down. Um, and I actually have, I'm testing it right now. I have sponsored on all my listings below like 250. And the, the week that I put those all on sales jumped a decent bit. And I've been like, consciously not being the cheapest on ebay intentionally for some of them Mm -hmm. and they've still been selling like it's a weird like i'd rather be the cheapest and i'd rather just sell for the cheapest no promoted listing fee but if i can raise the price five percent and pay two percent extra promotion fee i'm netting more money it it's weird but it's like why do people do that why don't people buy better (laughs) I'll never understand it. But yeah, those, 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 that's another big one is uh, the promoted listings really do work. I yeah. um, I had that set up on the Detective Pikachu packs that I'm selling. And so I, I set that up in the beginning. I did like a 5% ad rate um, because I was, I was into those packs for so little and I have so many of them. Yeah. So I set set that all up. Sales were going really well. I built up a ton of watchers. I had a ton of sales. So I figured, well, I really don't probably don't need this uh, this 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 promoted listing thing anymore. So I got rid of it for like a week, and there there was a dramatic decrease in in sales. When they're making more money, they're pushing that thing. If you put it high enough, I'm convinced. If you put it to like. 20 percent or something silly i don't even is there like a ceiling on it there must be right i don't think there is if you put it to like 20 percent, people will search like vacuum cleaner and they'll show you the, <laughs> the top result will be your detective pikachu packs like <laughs> they will just like pump those things <laughs> <laughs> it, 
it really like and and I notice occasionally I will just search like like when I'm pricing an item to list it, I'll search like PSA nine grand party, and it will show like a it will show some random promo that's not even the same thing mm -hmm. as a sponsored listing that they're probably just paying some ungodly amount to be there. Um, yep, I, I don't like it, but. If you can't beat them, join them. It's like other people are paying it; their listings are selling at higher prices than mine. You, you either, yeah, you either join them or you or you don't sell things, even as the lowest listed on eBay. It's weird. Yeah, it is. Oh, and then one more thing too that I just thought of um, while you were talking: the out of stock feature is a an absolute game changer. Um, I think I learned that. I forget. I don't know if you told me about it or if I learned it from Rusty's Patreon. I forget where I learned it from, but um that that is such a good feature. If you don't if you don't have if you're selling like multiple copies of anything, um set that up because basically what it does is instead of say you have 5 of a card um that you're selling as a buy it now, so you have quantity 5, instead of that listing going to zero and ending once you sell that final copy, the listing goes to zero and is hidden from the public. But as a seller, you can still go to that listing and adjust the quantity. So if you if you don't want to say, say you have like hundreds of something and you don't want to you don't want people knowing that you have hundreds of this card listed as quantity five or whatever it is, sell those five and then uh, edit the listing with another quantity of five. And it keeps the it keeps all the sales history, the views, the watchers. It keeps everything. So once you edit that listing with another five or whatever. Um, the listing is going to pop up back on eBay. It's going to keep all of your views, watchers, sales history. So you're going to kind of have a jump start on the competition with, uh, with compared to compared to other sellers who have to relist that card and kind of build up momentum again. That is huge. I use that on my store universally. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to smash that like button. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and press that notification bell so you don't miss any more of our future content. Another way to support the channel, both of our Ebays are linked below via an affiliate link. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you all later.